Welcome to Auto Mundial, the weekly car news and review show. This time we're taking a look at an all-new SUV from Hyundai's luxury sub-brand, the Genesis GV70. We also have practical performance courtesy of the Volkswagen Golf R Estate and a fast EV from BMW. Plus the quirky new Yaris Cross from Toyota and Chevrolet takes on Ford with its new electric pickup truck. That's all coming up, but first, the news. Italian supercar maker Lamborghini has announced plans to release four new products in the next 12 months. One of these new cars will be an updated version of the Urus, with refreshed styling and more than likely more power, borrowing powertrains from Porsche's KN range. Also planned is a new Aventador-based V12 model, which will, according to Lamborghini, celebrate the combustion engine. We don't yet know whether it'll be a retro homage, like last year's Countach throwback, or an all-new design before Lambo's flagship V12s are electrified with hybrid assistance. The other two new cars are unknown, but we're certainly looking forward to seeing what the designers and engineers come up with. Also in the news, Mercedes has confirmed that the next generation of its E-Class saloon car will continue to use internal combustion engines when it is launched in the second half of next year. The 2023 E-Class will continue to use a variety of petrol and diesel motors with 48-volt mild hybrid assistance rather than going electric. Unlike the upcoming new BMW 5 Series with its all-electric option and the next-generation Audi A6 with its e-tron powertrain, Mercedes EV Saloon is a separate model. The EQE is a similarly sized car with a more than 400 mile range and lots of tech from the flagship EQS. These days it sometimes feels like you can't move for luxury mid-size SUVs. Audi, Jaguar, Mercedes, Land Rover, Volvo, Alfa, they're all at it. And just when you thought there couldn't possibly be any more to choose from, there's this, the new Genesis GV70. You may not have heard of Genesis before. It's a luxury sub-brand of Hyundai that's been making cars under its own name since 2015. In 2021, they came to the UK and brought with them a whole lineup of left field alternatives to the ubiquitous European mainstays. So, how does the GV70 compare with X3s, Q5s, and GLCs? Well, it does look the part. It's curvy and understated, just the ticket in this part of the market. The big grille housing the number plate and split front and rear lights give it a distinctive look of its own, while inside you're treated to a sea of leather and brushed metal surfaces. The interior really does look fantastic and puts many more conventional European rivals to shame. It's spacious too, and absolutely full of equipment, much of which is operated via the enormous 14.5-inch infotainment screen sat atop the dashboard. There's a digital display behind the steering wheel too, which changes depending on which driving mode you're in. These consist of Eco, Normal, Sport, and the rather ambitious Sport Plus setting, which firms everything up. An electric version is on the way, but for now buyers can choose either a thirsty 2.5 litre turbocharged petrol motor producing 300 brake horsepower or a more frugal 206 brake horsepower 2.2 diesel. It remains to be seen whether this and the rest of the Genesis lineup will strike a chord with British buyers, but the GV70 is an intriguing car that deserves to do well. In recent years, Toyota has been busy electrifying its range, with almost all models now available with some form of hybrid assistance. Even this, the little Yaris, is a full-series hybrid, unusual for an affordable Super Mini. 
and it's proving to be a popular recipe. The Yaris is picking up awards and sales all over the place, so it was only a matter of time before Toyota cashed in with a crossover version. And here it is. Called the Yaris Cross, this diminutive SUV completes a trio of Yaris models, including the cheeky little GR model. Built on the same TNGA platform, the Yaris Cross uses the same 1.5-litre petrol motor as the Super Mini, hooked up to the same hybrid system for a total power output of 114 brake horsepower. That modest power is sent either to the wheels via a CVT transmission or straight to the batteries to increase charge for the batteries, allowing the car to run on electric-only mode for short distances. It's available with either front or all-wheel drive, and it's the latter that seems like the best bet. Unlike many cars in this sector, the all-wheel drive system doesn't take up any passenger or cargo space, and it gets a more advanced double wishbone suspension setup. Looking at the Yaris Cross, it's not particularly easy to spot the Yaris influence. The SUV makeover is a good one, with hints of the RAV4 and Land Cruiser, and some nice chunky dimensions. It has very good ground clearance for a crossover, and the squared wheel arches and big wheels mean it appears bigger than it actually is at first glance. Step inside and its Yaris heritage becomes much more apparent. The dashboard has been more or less lifted straight from the hatchback. There are one or two changes though, like the bigger infotainment screen and a new bespoke steering wheel with lots of buttons. However, the Yaris Sport doesn't have the market to itself, far from it. And one of our current class favourites is this. This is the latest Renault Captur, and its French design flair is immediately apparent. Like the Toyota, the Captur is based on a super mini, the Clio, and as such it gets not only great styling, but great build quality too. In the not-so-distant past, Renault's build quality was a bit hit and miss, but now the Captur is filled with lovely soft-touch plastics and loads of kit. All models come with a 7-inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, LED lights front and back, automatic air conditioning and a load of safety tech ensuring you stay pointing in the right direction. There are various petrol and diesel engines to choose from, as well as an E-Tech plug-in hybrid with a combined 158 brake horsepower. It has a middling range of up to 30 miles, but it's good value and a worthy rival to the Toyota. So, is the Yaris Cross good enough to take the Capture's crown? Well, we certainly think it's in with a shot. The Cross and the other Yaris variants mark a return to form for Toyota after a few years in the wilderness. Toyota expects to sell 150,000 Yaris Crosses a year, and we wouldn't be surprised if they manage it. One of the most striking new cars we saw last year was this, the eye-catching BMW iX. Built to take on the likes of the Audi e-tron and Mercedes EQC, it's an all-electric SUV inspired by 2018's iNext concept. It's based on BMW's new scalable EV architecture, which will in time be put to use on all manner of new electric cars from the brand. A 100 kilowatt battery sits under the floor, sending power to two electric motors, one for each axle. It gets an impressive 376 mile range, and the battery can be charged at a rate of 200 kilowatts, meaning you'll be able to reach an 80% charge in under 40 minutes. To go with the iX's futuristic looks, it's packed full of some pretty futuristic technology. BMW says it has 20 times more computing power than anything else they've built, capable of processing all of the necessary data for autonomous driving. The cabin is pretty space age too, and a real step forward for BMW interiors. It's clean and simple, with everything from the speakers to air vents having been blended into their surroundings. 
There's an interestingly shaped steering wheel, a big pair of bright screens, and all the switches are almost hidden in what BMW calls shy tech. It really is beautiful, with switches disguised within a little wooden control panel in the center console next to the elegant crystal-like iDrive controller. It is an impressive car then, but what would it look like if the M Division got hold of it? Well, wouldn't you know, they have. This is the M60, a harder, faster iX for those who care more about their 0 to 60 than their 0 to 80% charge time. The book teeth grills may seem rabbit like, but the M60 goes like a hare. It'll hit the 62 miles per hour mark in 3.9 seconds, not bad for an SUV that weighs well over two and a half tons. The top speed is limited to 155, 31 miles per hour more than the next quickest version. With a motor at each end, the all-wheel drive M60 produces a mammoth 811 pounds-feet of torque and 611 brake horsepower. To keep all the extra grunt under control, the air suspension has been recalibrated for better handling and improved agility. There are various unique styling touches too, both inside and out, and it gets a load more standard equipment including soft closed doors and a fancy Bowers & Wilkins diamond stereo. Prices start at £112,000, with the first customer deliveries expected in the summer. After the break, fast compacts, estates and some futuristic American pickup trucks. Coming up, the new electric Chevy Silverado. First though, When you think of a fast German estate car, it's likely the first cars that will come to mind are Audis and Mercedes. Big autobahn missiles with outrageous performance and price tags to match. What you might not think of is a Volkswagen Golf. Well, this is the new Golf R Estate, a more practical version of Golf's latest all-wheel drive hot hatch. Following the same formula of previous versions, the new Golf R is like a GTI that's been hitting the gym. Power is up from 242 bhp in the GTI to 316, while the 0 to 62 time is down to 4.9 seconds, around 0.2 seconds off the hatchback version, courtesy of a turbocharged 2-litre motor. Top speed is a hugely impressive 168 miles per hour, but only if you pay the extra cash to get the limiter removed. Naturally, the chassis had some upgrades too, with stiffer adaptive dampers, a new progressive power steering system, bigger brakes and wider tyres. It's lower too, but it's not just the hardware that's been altered. The traction and stability control systems have also been tweaked and there's a fancy new torque vectoring system that can split power between the front and rear axles and even between the two rear wheels for maximum grip on even the slippiest of surfaces. To set it apart from the more traditional GTI, the Golf R does without the red trim and tartan seats, instead going for a contemporary look with a big rear spoiler, quad Acropovic exhausts and a serious looking diffuser. At the front, the changes are more subtle with a slightly more aggressive body kit and a small but significant R badge in the grille. Inside, it's business as usual, with some R-branded sports seats and various bits of blue trim and stitching. Like all Mark 8 Golfs, the interior isn't quite as upmarket as some of its rivals, but it does at least come with plenty of goodies, chief among which is the new drift mode, which, you guessed it, turns the grippy Golf into a power-sliding hooligan 
at the touch of a button. However, the Golf R is not the only compact, faster state car out there. This is the quirky yet capable Mini Clubman JCW, a 302 brake horsepower hooligan. That big lump of horsepower comes courtesy of its turbocharged 2-litre motor from the BMW M135i. It'll hit 62 from rest in 4.9 seconds, the same as the Golf, and top out at 155. This is one very quick Mini. Sadly, the JCW isn't quite as practical as the VW. As with any clubman, the cabin space is disappointingly average. While it may wear a Mini badge, this is far from being a truly small car. As a result, the cramped rear seats and underwhelming boots may come as a surprise. The weird rear doors in place of a hatch are a pain too, needing lots of clearance behind you to open fully and making loading and unloading a chore. The resulting split rear window also reduces visibility. As charming as the Mini is though, we take the Golf. Get it in an obvious colour and it becomes the perfect stealth performance car. And with your whole family's luggage in the boots. In the world of American pickup trucks, the ongoing battle between Chevy, Ford and Ram is fiercer than ever. But with everything from basic work trucks to off-road ready performance models, manufacturers are now branching out into battery-powered models. This is the all-new Chevrolet Silverado EV, a 650 brake horsepower electric truck capable of 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds, with a 400 mile predicted range and 780 pounds feet of torque. It can tow upwards of four and a half tons, or according to Chevrolet, up to nine tons in the slower WT version. Production isn't due to start until next year, but for now Chevy has revealed two different versions. The no fuss work focused WT and its incredible towing capacity and the faster, more luxurious RST seen here. Both models will come with an innovative multi-flex tailgate and mid-gate system which allows you to load longer items than would be possible in traditional pickups. There's a load of clever storage features too, but the Chevy has a problem. The first customer deliveries aren't scheduled until late next year, or even early 2024. Meanwhile, Ford is off to a head start. This is the F-150 Lightning. It borrows its name from the old performance version of the truck. This one, though, doesn't get a rumbling V8. It doesn't even have the V6 from the Raptor. You see, this is Ford's newest EV. Described by Chairman Bill Ford as a defining moment for Ford and the American car industry, this could well be the truck that takes EVs truly mainstream in North America. In 2020 alone, Ford sold three quarters of a million F-Series pickups, so this Lightning could soon outsell Ford's other EV, the Mustang Mach-E. And don't think that this commercial vehicle won't live up to its Lightning name. It comes as standard with two motors, four-wheel drive, and 563 brake horsepower, meaning the Lightning should silently power its way to 62 miles per hour from a standstill in under five seconds. It'll be useful too. Like any American pickup truck, it needs to be able to fit lots of stuff in the back and tow heavy loads. Well, the Lightning has a payload of over 900 kilos and can tow more than four and a half tons, matching the RST version of the Chevrolet. This will be the torquiest Ford truck ever made and is designed to be at least as useful as any petrol or diesel powered version. The range is said to be up to 300 miles and it's capable of 150 kilowatt DC fast charging, meaning it can be charged from 15 to 80% in 41 minutes. 
The new electric powertrain has allowed Ford to get creative with the onboard accessories. It will be available with onboard scales to weigh your load and adjust the range estimate. And it can even be used to power your house for up to 10 days in the event of a power outage at home. From the outside, it looks pretty much like a standard F-150 and not quite as stylish as the Chevy. But open the bonnet and instead of an engine, there's just a big boot. There are charging sockets everywhere and a massive infotainment system. It won't even be too expensive thanks to the simple body-on-frame construction that's the same as any other F-150. And the big news for those keen to get their hands on an electric truck, deliveries are starting this year, with prices starting at under $40,000. Chevrolet then has some catching up to do, especially with a battery-powered Ram just around the corner too. Join us again next week on Auto Mundial as we take a look at something rather different, the hydrogen-powered Toyota Mirai.